Yeah! I don't know why I did that. I just felt like Patrick's thump for like a split second. <laughs> hey guys, it's Seven, and as you guys have probably seen before this video, I filmed a video for story time, and I have another story time video. Wow, this is crazy. And, um, it's, it's, it's a pretty brutal story time video. So I'm going to be talking about my ditcher of a friend. Uh, Let's say her name is Sarah, because I don't want to give any of her information away, because I'm a nice person. Um, her name's Sarah, and I'm going to be talking about her in this video today, and why she wasn't a good friend at all. So, as a lot of you know, I have been growing up in Massachusetts, and I went to a school, an elementary school. It was second, and I, I think it's kindergarten through fifth, and I got there in second. And there was this girl named Sarah who went to that school as well. And we became friends like that. We were instantly friends. We were so close. And Sarah was a very nice person at that time. And we just became friends very easily. We would go to each other's houses. We would do everything together. We have sleepovers. Over the years, we realized we started getting older. And she just started changing a lot. And she wasn't the same Sarah as she was when we were kids. And I'm going to tell you why in this video. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you one of the times that Sarah had ditched me. Uh, so I told her that we could have a sleepover after my soccer practice. So that day I had soccer practice. And it was uh, not too far from my house. It was actually a little bit like, it was like five minutes away. And I had tryouts that day. So... I had tryouts. We planned to have a sleepover. It was just like one of those things. She didn't take anything to my house. She was just going to sleep in what she had and just do what she had at that moment. So we go to my tryouts and I'm completely ready. I'm like completely fine with it. And we're playing. I, I see her on the sidelines and then it's the end of, oh my god, cars. So me and Sarah decide to go to this practice and I get there, I'm completely fine. And then the, the tryout is over. So I, I'm like, okay, now I can have a sleepover with Sarah without having any other disruptions. And I grab my water, I grab my jacket and I, I look around cause there's benches and I say, Sarah, and I don't hear anybody. And I say, Sarah, and I like yell it louder as I go on. I think I yelled it about a series of four times. Every single time I would yell it louder and louder. And then I ended up not hearing her. So then I ended up walking around this whole field. Which when I tell you this whole field, it's a really, 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 really big field. Like, it's really big. It's bigger than like, it's two football fields connected like next to each other and um i i'm yelling sarah and she isn't there i looked every single place i looked at the baseball field i looked like everywhere and i could not find sarah and i just was so confused i was like okay so i walked down to the little parking lot from the ramp that goes down to the parking lot my parents drive up slowly and they say hey we're why do I keep saying her name? And they say, Harry, hey, where's Sarah? And I say, I was going to ask you the same exact thing. And they have no idea. So then they have to get out of the car. My parents so look around the whole field. We look at all the same places. We cannot find Sarah. So we end up just driving home because they're like, okay, maybe she's okay. Maybe she just isn't there. And then we started freaking out. My dad drove about this far until he realized... What if she got kidnapped? So, I have her phone number. I have my phone. And I text her, Hey, Sarah, where are you? And she replies. She doesn't reply for like a very long time. It's like five minutes she's not replying. And then we start completely going ballistic over this. So, I start texting her more. I'm like, Sarah, where are you? Where are you right now? And after about 15 minutes of me waiting for her to respond, she texts back. Oh, I had to walk home because I had to make dinner for my family. She's telling me she couldn't walk up to me for two seconds to tell me that her parents called her home 
to make dinner. <laughs> I just, I can't get over that because we we were in if if we lost her we would have been in more trouble than anything we had. and the fact that she would just leave without telling me made me freak out more than anything because i thought i was going to get in trouble and i knew i was going to get in trouble because she w i was she was my responsibility and she just went off on her own without me and i don't think it was really to make dinner for a family i think it was mostly just to get away and not be at practice and i just for the whole entire night, I just didn't talk to her. Because I was so angry that I couldn't even function words correctly. To the point where I just didn't want to talk to her. Another time that she ditched me was a time where uh, I was... There's this place called a youth center here in my place where I live. And uh, it's basically like a daycare. You go there and it's a whole bunch of kids. You just kind of like hang out. Do whatever you want. You go on computers. Just hang out. Play like... GameCube and stuff and I was there and all I was hanging out with her basically I was just hanging out with her we were walking around because if you don't sign in you practically are under their control like they, they're not in charge of you basically so we didn't sign in we were just kind of walking around and they can't kick you out either you can just walk around if they know you're a good person then you can walk around so we're walking around like outside and then I go to the bathroom and I walk out and she's nowhere to be found. So I start losing my mind again. This was before the soccer incident. And I start, I'm like free, breathing heavily. I'm like, where did she go? What happened? And if you guys don't know, she lives right there. So like there's a hill that goes down to her house and then here's the youth center. So... Her house is on this hill that goes down. It's like the woods and you go, you climb it up it and there's like a little guardrail so you can like jump over it and then go to her house. And she left and she left her, she left with her sister, she left with her other sister and she left me here. And everyone was leaving at that time. So like everyone was leaving and she left earlier than everyone else. So I was started freaking out and my parents were going to get me. They were going to let me walk home. So I ended up freaking out. I had to text her again and I said, hey, where'd you go? And she's like, I walked home. We didn't talk for a very long time when that happened because I, I clearly, I texted her. I said, you're a ditcher. I hope you know that. And she says, no, I didn't did you. I had to leave because my sister wanted to get home. I was like, you could have told me. All these times that she's leaving me and she's ditching me, she could clearly tell me where she's going instead of just leaving me there, freaking out about her safety because I'm taking care of her. This isn't really her ditching me, but this is actually her third wheeling me. <coughs> so, Sarah... And me went to McDonald's and we, we just want, we wanted to get like an ice cream, I guess. And then we started walking around town. Our town's really small, so we were allowed to walk around. So we walked around for a lar very large amount of time, about like a couple hours. We went to like this playground that used to be Wacky World. We hung out there and we started walking around town. And we went to, um, I think it was the Dollar General. We walked out and then we sat at Dunkin' Donuts. So... Dunkin' Donuts is like right next to Dollar General and then there's like a road that goes down. And uh, we were sitting there in Dunkin' Donuts. We didn't really get anything. We we're just sitting there. And we texted and stuff and we just talked. And then she says, hey, do you want to invite our friend Dakota? I'm not afraid to say her name because I don't really care if she hears her own name. But her name is Dakota. And Sarah says this and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. I guess we could do that. And... We start getting out, we walk down the street, and we meet up with Dakota. So, basically, we start hanging out for, like, a couple hours. There's this place called Jeepers Creepers here where you can buy, like, all this weird stuff. And we got, like, fart bombs and, like, the, uh, firework poppers. And we got those. And we started playing with them. There was a parade that day, and we set off one of those bombs. And it made a really loud pop noise, and we threw it out into the little section where everyone was hanging out and we ran and for the whole entire day 
they just talked non-stop like they were right next to each other and they kind of pushed me in the back like when I tried to stand in a vertical in a, in a line with them they just pushed me behind them because they didn't want me there and after a while I started talking to my actual best friend Jordan she's like my bestest friend ever and we start texting and I say hey can you please like talk to me I'm really bummed out and she's like why and I say Sarah's ditching third wheeling me for Dakota and she says that really sucks so then we walk to McDonald's again just for Dakota to get food and we sit there because they asked me if I wanted some like I forgot what it was but we sat there I didn't really eat anything and I was sitting there at a totally different table than those two so those two were sitting at the two table and I was sitting behind them and then I text my parents I want to go home right now I'm I'm being third wheeled by Sarah and they say, okay, meet us at her house. Because she lives right down the road of McDonald's. So I bolted. And my, at the time, my grandmother was in the hospital. So I had to come up with an excuse of why I had to leave. So I said, my parents want me to get home because my grandmother's at the hospital. So I bolted up the road. And then they met me there. Because my suitcase was at So after that day, I went to her house, I got my suitcase with all my stuff in it, and my parents brought me home. So then my parents asked me about it, I just said I don't want to talk about it right now, and right as I get in the car, she texts me, Hey, you know you could have talked to us when you were with us, you just decided not to when we gave you opportunities. And I said right back to her, if you really thought that you honestly gave me the opportunity to speak you are wrong because every single time I tried to speak you would change the subject and not answer my questions so to this day she texts me asking me hey you wanna hang out and I say bye I'd rather hang out with a true friend so Jordan <laughs> so yeah that's my ditcher of a friend I hope you guys enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed please hit that subscribe button if you it's down there, isn't it? <laughs> Please hit that subscribe button down there if you want more content. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye, guys.